in 2020, more than a third or 36%, that is 59 million Americans in the US alone freelanced using online platforms, according to Upwork's Freelance Forward survey of 6,000 US workers. A third, a third of them. These workers contributed $1.2 trillion to the US economy. And that's in 2020 alone. This is a 22% increase just from a year before in 2019. And you might be wondering, well, what are the age demographics of this? Well, turns out that the younger you are, of course, the more likely you will be freelancing. Um, they said 30% of Gen Xers that were from 39 to 54 years of age were freelancing. So 30% in that category, while 44% of millennials aged 23 to 38 were freelancing. Now that number jumps to half of them for Gen Z aged 18 to 22. So you can see like as as you go younger in terms of age, the chances that they're going to be freelancing is much, much higher. So digital labor platforms are very different from a traditional business in that they have few employees, but they manage the works of large numbers of people. The, the term that's used in the research is they mitigate the work. So they, they don't really manage they because they don't really, they don't really do anything for you. They just manage it. Um, so they say mitigate. So they, an example platform would be people per hour. So the people per hour platform has 50 employees, but it manages the work of over 2.4 million people. And that's nothing compared to hacker rank, which has 200 employees and it manages the work of 11 million people. So that's huge. What does it look like to work for a company? Not of hmm, hundreds of people, thousands of people, not even hundreds of thousands, but millions, millions of people. Digital workers tend to work more hours and they get paid significantly less than their employed peers. Worldwide, the average working week for an app based taxi driver was 65 hours a week. So quite a bit more. And we're seeing I, I'm a little bit hesitant about the um, hourly wages because we're seeing conflicting reports. <laughs> and it just depends on who who's doing the reporting. Uh, so Upwork is reporting that 75% of the workers earned the same or more pay than their traditional uh, employers in a survey of 6,000 workers from the US. Now I'm wondering if the earnings numbers are a fair comparison because uh, there's fees charged by these online platforms. And these fees range from uh, 3.5 to 20 percent, uh, like of their total earnings that is given to the web-based platform. To uh, and if you're, it's between five percent and 25 percent if you're a location-based platform. So let's say you're driving for Uber, like you may be earning a certain amount. Maybe that was more than you got paid before, but you're giving 25 percent of that to Uber. So. This is one of the reasons why so many restaurants these days are just struggling to compete uh, against their lower cost ghost kitchens. Uh, these are kitchens that pretty much all they do is they, they, they make the food and then it's only for delivery. They have no they have no internal space, so they have less overhead cost. Uh, they're they're optimized for just serving uh, food directly to for delivery. Uh, there's also a lot of um, unpaid negotiation that's needed if you work in the in the gig economy. 
uh, the International Labor Organization found that a third of the hours worked on web-based platforms where you're delivering the product on the web, it, it's just unpaid. A third of your hours is unpaid. So yet if you look at the numbers worldwide, this is where the numbers are significantly lower. Uh, the average hourly earnings was $3.40 US an hour. So that's overall $3.40 US an hour. Half of those workers made less than $2.40 an hour from a survey of 12,000 global digital workers. So half made less than $2.40 an hour. Now, of course, workers in developed countries, they made more than workers in undeveloped countries. So the workers in developed countries, their salary ranged from $4 US to $12 US an hour, while the hourly wage for those in developing countries ranged from $2 US to $5.50 US per hour uh, in developing countries. And the key point here is that it it's the key point here is that it takes the exact same amount of effort for an employer to hire a worker from a developing country as from a developed country, right? So it, it's the same amount of effort now to to go and hire somebody from a developing country as it is to hire that same person uh, from a developed country. So if the ratings for an on online worker are good, why pay more? Why would you pay more as an employer?